Welcome back, and we're going to continue in our editor scripting series. So far, we've been messing around with this little data object and customizing it in interesting ways and looking at some options for all of our inspector redrawing customization. So now consider what if I wanted to add a new custom class as a part of this data uh, object right here. So for example, maybe we wanted to create different kinds of abilities that we could add to a particular monster. Uh, one thing you're gonna notice is if you, if you try to create a custom ability class that it's going to have its own little system of how it's redrawn, right? Like in this case, we wanna look at how we can use property drawers to customize our custom classes that are inside of our, our larger data object. So I wanna create an ability system with different abilities. Each ability might have a different name and different you know, damage value, other properties or whatever. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'll, I'll explain this as I go along, um, just so this makes a little bit more sense. Also, I, I noticed that I there was a long stretch where I wasn't great about committing every tutorial's GitHub code, but you know I, I have it up to date up at this point. Um, I'll, I'll link it where it's relevant. So just sorry about that. Uh, you can still see the final code. So first, let's make our new ability. I'm actually going to do this inside of, what do we want? Our monster maker inside of there. We can call this monster ability. You know, we could make this more generic and just call this ability if we wanted to expand this to other things. But for now, I'm uh, just going to call it monster ability just to make this really clear. For the sake of example, let's let that recompile. Okay. So the thing about our monster ability is we don't want this to be a script that we attach to a game object, right? So it's not going to be a mono behavior. Uh, we just want this to be a small little custom data class. You know, we want to be able to assign values to it and maybe pass it around or something. So we're going to keep this real simple. Now I want to show you what happens if we try to add monster abilities to our monster data. So first let's, let's give this ability some values. So for example, maybe we give this a um, serialized field private string name, and we'll give it a default. It doesn't matter. And what else? Probably an amount of damage. Int damage. Uh, we'll default the damage to one. And just to show you, you could actually, um, let, let's do a uh, an enum for a type. Best practice is to keep your enums either in an enum script or as its own thing. But just to show you, you could put it as part of the same script. Uh, I'll, you know, I've done it both ways just so you can see it. Public enum element type, right? Like maybe we have different elements on our, on our abilities, like fire or whatever. Uh, you know, sometimes I like to always start off with none. Let's just do the captain planet. Oh, earth, fire, wind, water, heart. Okay, there we go. Uh, you know, if it's healing, maybe it'll be heart, water, wind, water. Okay, whatever. Element type. So this is just the definition of the element type, right? Like this is our cookie cutter. We actually need to make a cookie. Uh, so we're gonna use that here. Let's say serialized field. This is a type of element type. It's a little confusing to say. And you know, maybe we just call it element. Uh, maybe we default this just in case to none. All right. I wanna show you what happens when we go back to our monster data and uh, we want to add a monster ability, right? So we're gonna come down here and we're going to do a serialized field type of monster ability. ability. Uh, you know, even more accurately, what we want is an array of abilities. So we're gonna do monster ability array. And we're gonna call this abilities. And you know, while we're at it, let's let's make a public access to it. So down here, we're gonna do public Monster ability, abilities, and then just return our abilities. Okay. Uh, because it's not an array. Okay. All right, there we go. So first of all, you know, I save that. I come back and we'll look at our inspector. But you will see one, I mean, we have our custom inspector, right? Like we're not going to see it because when we do our custom inspector, we did not specifically tell our new thing that we added to draw. So this is one of the downsides of custom inspectors is you just have to be really specific with it, right? Like you have to come back in and modify it and change it because we wanted we wanted full control and this is the downside. This is the curse of full control. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to add our, uh, our monster ability to our custom inspector. <clears throat> we have our editor, our monster data inspector. Uh, let's just add it the same way we did all the other stuff. So we'll do private serialized property and we'll call this abilities. Uh, and then we're gonna come down here. We're going to search abilities equals serialized object dot find property. Um, searching for abilities. Then once we have this, we want to draw it somewhere down here. Yeah, we'll replace this. Let's just say editor, GUI layout dot property field abilities and new GUI. Right, at this point, we're just being consistent with the other stuff we have here. Okay. But if I save that, come back in, uh, you're not going to see it, all right? And this is the first little gotcha to, to keep in mind, is we actually need to add a little something to our custom script right here. Uh, when you want to render a custom class to the inspector, you need to actually come up here and say system.serializable like that, to our monster ability, save it. Now you see if we come back into our project window, like now we can expand it. So it's just something to keep in mind. Like it's a little gotcha. You need to add system.serializable if you want to uh, show a custom class in the inspector. So, uh, and when I say custom class, I just mean it's not inheriting from mono behavior. Like it's a little, it's smaller than that. It's not attached to a game object. You could contain a monster ability as a game object so now that we can we can see this, we can then further explore how we want to customize this. Because you can already see, like, if I had a new one, what if I wanted to change the way that this is created? You know, kind of like how we did with our inspector window. We're going to use a property drawer for this, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. But now what I want is I want customization on how our individual abilities are drawn as we add them.